Now, I'm double checking to be sure uh, I have accomplished what I think I've accomplished. I do this with traction and my attention is on the hip capsules and they are symmetrical and so that double checks. Ah. Now we will use balanced ligamentous tension to check her spine. And I find her thoracolumbar lumbar junction in a twist. So I will balance two parts of her spine above this junction and below it so that I can get her diaphragm to unwind it. Because all the time uh, breathing is going on, we're alive. And while we breathe, everything in our bodies is moving. Then you have to wait. If you're not going to do the work, you have to wait until the patient's body does it. Until you have to breathe in. And let it be a good deep breath. Excellent. Now, now I have to release your mediastinal fascia. Which needs it. Now your upper thoracic spine is beginning to move. It was quite static. And I am balancing by using the spinous processes as a contact for leverage to move the bodies. Now I'm using some traction to help everything to get lined up here. And it's working. But your cranial vertebral junction and your cranial base are under a strain. Now I'm getting a balance between the atlas and the axis. But the response is very good, and that is probably because you've been having a treatment a week. Mm. 
Now we have the occiput and the atlas. Will you dorsiflex both feet, please? Thank you. Hold it. Release your feet. The atlas release your occiput, and now I can derotate it. I'm holding the left temporal bone while I turn the occipital squamer on the right side. That changes the position of the posterior pole of attachment of the reciprocal tension membrane. And that will take some pull off the front. And your response with the cerebrospinal fluid is excellent. Flexion, normal. Extension, normal. Come back to neutral. Side bending rotation, convex to the right. Resistance, neutral. Side bending rotation, convex to the left. Neutral. Uh, really, I shouldn't say that. No action, no response. So I'll test for a torsion. Greater wing high on the right. Very good. Normal. Torsion with the greater wing high on the left. Normal. Back to neutral. Now we come to the vertical strain. Vertical strain with the sphenoid low. No response, it won't go. Vertical strain with the sphenoid high. It will go, and that is the problem. The lateral strain pattern is neutral. So, I'm lifting your zygomatics away from the greater wings uh, as far as they'll go, which isn't very far. But you see, this is the mechanics of the problem you have. I'll check the midline for a particular plate of the ethmoid. That's static, too. So, I, I set the stage, and I'm going to treat your facial mechanics. Thank you. But I have to get my finger cuts up. very tough. I'm just beginning to get onto the lateral pterocoid plate here. Now I'll hold it down while I lift the sphenoid, lift the frontal off the sphenoid. It's working. I'll, I'll balance the right zygomatic with the greater wing. That seems to do some good. Now I'm going to 
carry the maxilla down. Well, it takes some sweet time, but it worked. And this is going to be pretty heavy here. Mm -hmm. This front of sweet oil is really plastered up. Uh, I almost forgot to breathe. Ah, it's finally coming loose. Well, you did have it fixed here. Now I'll check and see what we've accomplished. Darcy flex both feet. Ah, that helps. Your sphenoid was simply locked up from motion in any direction. Well, it had to move some, so it did move uh, in the vertical plane a little. It is free in relation to the palatines. It was the zygomatics with relation to the greater wings in the lateral wall of the orbit that was really static. But also, your frontal sphenoid, the top of the greater wings, was not positioned well in relation to the frontals. Now this is slow, but it's working. Needed to. Ah, there is the action. Now, I'm going to lift your front here. Widen the ethmoid notch, which is happening. The 
back of the orbital plate is frontal is moving in relation to the front of the lesser wings which is a gain Now I'm going to undertake to carry the frontal forward out of the coronal suture laterally. It, it, that was all right, but I had to check it. Now we'll test for the vertical uh, strain pattern. Uh, the sphenoid will go lower. And it wouldn't move at all previously. Now we come back to neutral. I'm going to do a vault lift. Posterior parietal vault lift. This was a good idea. hasn't finished yet. Now we turn the sphenoid high stream. So you have normal motion at the sphenobasilar junction. I have it balanced there, and now the mechanism is rebalancing torsion with a greater wing high on the right. Good. Your machinery is working here. Now we'll try torsion with the greater wing high on the left. Oh, that, that's very good. Now your cranial mechanism is beginning to move properly as a whole. Mm. I've got to talk to your zygomatics again. You really did get locked up, Maud. Mm. Uh, you're loosening up here. Now, see about this atlas again. Dorsey flex both feet. Thank you.
Ah, this is more like it. Now relax the feet. Thank you. which was not moving well but it's beginning to move better now This is slowly getting into action, normal action. Uh, that really is something. Now I'm going to get on the other side. But you did have a pattern in your spine of a long spiral twist with two twists in it. One here and the other at the base of your neck. Huh. Ah, but your diaphragm was not working as well for you as it could either. Now it's begun a, a better excursion. Ah, that's better. Okay. Well, when you let go, you really let go nicely. Oh, that's good. Your sacrum is really working well now. So, that's all I can think of doing unless you can think of something else you need.